Air Force One. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out Air Force One, the 1997 Harrison Ford. I'm pretty sure Gary Oldman is in this movie as well. Kind of action movie, I think. Maybe suspenseful movie. I'm not really sure. I think this is based off of the Tom Clancy novels, but again, I'm not sure about that. All of this information is just potential besides the fact that Harrison Ford is in this film. I've been wanting to watch this movie for a while now. It's been on my list for a while, just kind of sitting there, kind of simmering in my mind and stuff like that and today I thought why not watch it I know a lot of people who really like this movie and so I was like why don't I give it a shot myself I also know there's a movie called The Fugitive which looks very similar to this movie and also stars Harrison Ford and I know that came out before this movie but I wasn't sure if The Fugitive was like the first movie and Air Force One was the second movie because you know there's no like ones and twos in the titles or anything and so I searched it up and it seems like Air Force One is a standalone movie I could be wrong, the internet, the internet could be wrong, but I'm watching this movie instead of The Fugitive first. The Fugitive is still on that list, maybe I'll watch it eventually if people like to react to this one, but I'm watching Air Force One first because it's just the one that I want to watch more and it doesn't seem like I need to watch The Fugitive to watch this one, even though The Fugitive does seem very similar to this film. And before we get into this reaction, let me do the lighting, so let me turn on the light and decide what color it should be. Boop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so I am going to be going red today. Red, not for blood, not for violence, but for American patriotism. <laughs> and also because I'm Canadian, red is also in the Canadian flag, so it's kind of like a little Canada, go Canada as well, but for America, that's what I'm doing the red for today. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon for uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube, as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early. Thank you so much if you check it out. Now let's get back to the video. Okay. Let's see Harrison Ford, hopefully in the president's airplane. I hope you enjoy my reaction to Air Force One. Ooh, we're starting strong. Wolfgang Peterson, Peterson, Peterson. I recognize that name. Air Force One. I'm excited for this movie. Oh, William H. Macy. I like that guy. The music is so good. I feel like I need to do this. Jerry Goldsmith, that's why the music is so good. You're killing it, man, already. Oh, you're about to get scoped. Oh. Absolutely scoped. Ah, that's kinda cool. They're all like Batman. This is kinda epic. Jerry Goldsmith is actually killing it. This is Lawboy. Package is Yes. That the self-proclaimed leader of Kazakhstan, General Ivan Radik. Well done, guys. Well done. Harrison Ford, hello. Of one of the world's greatest leaders. Radik is now in prison. Kind of cool that this movie has Russia and the US working together. That doesn't usually happen. The president of the United States of America. He's the president? I didn't expect that. I thought he was some like secret agent or something, but he's the president. We issued economic sanctions and hid behind the rhetoric of diplomacy. Ooh, speaking facts. Atrocity and terror are not political weapons. And to those who would use them, your day is over. Oh. We will never negotiate. Oh, yeah, you can't negotiate with Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah. I want to fly on Air Force One. I bet it's so nice inside, so luxurious. Gentlemen, welcome to Air Force One. Please present. It's Gary Oldman. President of the United States, although I we understand. I'm terribly sorry. Yeah, actually. Oh, I bet Gary Oldman's the bad guy at this. I love bad guy Gary Oldman. To accommodate your news crew. So, if uh, you boys are all clear. Yeah. Oh, they're going under the guise of a news crew. Well, now it's public. Now it's policy. Get behind it. <laughs> I'd vote for Harrison Ford. There goes the neighborhood. Oh, 
If you'd like, I think we have time for a quick tour. Those seats look so nice, man. Oh my god. I don't know why, I think it's the music, but this movie feels so epic, you know? Last week, the president called the shuttle astronauts. Am I coming there? Melanie? Yes. The president's arriving, they should all take their seats. The plane seems secure, but not overly secure. Do you think it has a lot more protocols now to stay secure? Maybe even after this movie, they're like, oh shoot, we can't let this happen, actually. Sorry. Mr. President. Sir? Yeah, could you put the game on now, please? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> He's literally like every dad, you know, let's put the game on. Give me 15 minutes. It's even like me. Together. I do this now, too. Let's put the game on. Let's put the game on. Time alone. 14, 13, Michigan. All right. Mich oh. Okay, he's happy, but like... I wasn't you never. How dare. I would hate if people tell me the scores of games that I'm interested in. Oh, my God. Biggest pet peeve right there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the aircraft commander. Oh, sweet. We're taking off soon. Welcome. I love, I don't know if I said this, but I love movies that take place in confined spaces. This is going to take place on a plane, hopefully. And then also, I love plane movies. I don't know why, but I do. Oh, I know. She's... Yes. The both of us. Okay. Bye-bye. I like how the game's on every TV. You didn't give a damn. You knew what needed to be done, and you did it. And you spoke from your heart. I love her. She's so supportive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank you for your hospitality, Moscow. And we have lift off, everybody. Well, imagine having to read on a plane. Imagine having no movie. Plane. That'd be crazy. These are two of Saddam Hussein's Republican Guard Brigades that have been moved north. Ah, oh, it's this guy. It's the guy that I said that I liked. Macy or something. William H. Macy. Gibbs? Guys? Yeah, it's Bill. And now I love the silence. You can just hear the faintness of the air outside as the plane flies by. It's adding some suspense. Take a look at him. Thank you. Whoa. Oh. 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 Oh my god, I didn't expect that. You but There was something fishy. They did the really fishy looking close up when he walked on the plane, but I didn't think much of it. I should have. Oh god. Grenades. Oh no, never mind. I thought there was a grenade on the plane. I was like, that's a bad idea. Okay. Okay. And the fact that the like the outside of the plane is bulletproof too, it means that the bullets you can shoot on the plane and it won't decompress. Where just land, just land the plane anywhere. Dude, Alice, you're gonna get shot, man. That guy just saved your life. Air Force One acknowledged. We are scrambling our fighters. Emergency equipment will be standing. Oh, uh, thank you, Germany. Thank you, Germany. Oh no! Sir, get in! What about my family? Have you guys seen Rogue One? This is like Rogue One, but Air Force One style. Also, how do these jets not? Get the plane and stuff, you know. Oh, Ramstein, that's sick. This is Air Force One. Emergency pod has been deployed. Oh, that is so cool. Blow up the plane. Support all airspace has been cleared. Alert forces have been mobilized. This is Everyone really here? awesome. We're working on it. The music, some of the visuals look really cool. It's just so intense, you know. The pacing is bam, 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 bam. <laughs> that was such a cool reveal. Okay, what do they do now? Open the door! They take control of the cockpit and then they keep flying. Flapster. Flapster. 
<laughs> this is so cool, man. Dude, this pilot, most epic man in history. What are you doing? Get up, no! No! Oh. You guys have to go. You guys have to go. Oh my days. Uh, they have the plane, but not the president. So what's the deal of this movie going to be? Try and get Air Force One back? No airborne scenarios. Well, we better start generating them, haven't we, General? And they better be damn good. Interesting that there's no airborne scenarios, and then very soon there will be so many of them. Go. 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 Yes, Steve. Oh, and the daughter and the the wife, right, is on the plane. Gonna shoot him. Gonna shoot him. Oh, I thought that guy was dead. I thought that guy was so dead. Take Panama, but who has access to them? You think someone on the plane helped them? What if someone? Yeah, someone did. She's right. Where is my husband? He's dead. They're gonna say that. Oh, never mind. He will not negotiate. Really? His wife. Yeah, and his kid. His daughter. Yeah, he definitely will. <laughs> I think he will negotiate. Oh my god. Gary Oldman is a genius, man. That was a nice reveal. Oh, 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 we still, oh. It took me like way too long to realize he was still on the plane. Yeah, no more nuclear launch codes, right? They changed them. The world's most secure aircraft. What is it? Yeah, not really that secure, is it there, buddy? So you can stop sweating through that silk blouse of yours. Oh my god. On that great day of deliverance, you will know what I want. <laughs> oh, Gary Oldman's so good. Security advisor, his classified papers, and his baseball glove. Yeah, that last one is big. So good deal. How's your blouse? What assurances do I have that you'll keep your word? You don't. Until then, I will execute a hostage every half an hour. Oh my god. Oh my god. Damn it. Execute a hostage every half an hour. Oh, Gary Oldman said I got time limit. The president is still on board. He did. Why wouldn't they tell us? There's some really good camera work. In a crossfire, and they're afraid we'll retaliate. Damn right we'll retaliate. We'll release General Reddick into the goddamn atmosphere. <laughs> he has no right to take chances with his life. <sighs> that camera work is really good, though. It was very floaty, going towards all the characters and stuff. It was pretty engaging, actually. <laughs> POV, you're a mole. <laughs> Oh god, you're trapped. What are you gonna do? Jump on him, jump on him. Oh, get the jets. Call the jets. I hate to say this, but 50 people is a small price to pay to stop that from happening. Oh my god, now, yeah, what do you do? Just kill 50 people to save millions? Like, what is a life worth? He's like, yes, yes, go and watch the game. <laughs> a man is drawn to a sports game, like a moth to a flame. And Betty's sitting in the chair. Oh, you thought he was sitting in the chair? I thought too. Just don't make the gun shoot, just don't make the gun shoot. Oh, nice. Hey, 
Harrison Ford, the president with a gun on an airplane. That's all you need. That's the tagline you need. Let's start up this Oh man, your cover is blown a little bit. This is a great tracking shot. This is a cool set. Oh, which bathroom is it? All the doors were open before. Oh, kind of genius. Kind of genius! No, Mr. President, I cannot. Then there is nothing I can do. Oh, man. What's he looking for? Maybe he's just curious. I wonder what's in people's luggage these days. <laughs> in the time we have, messy. Three more minutes before they execute the first. Oh, God. Better be DJ if one. Come from Azul. Who do they choose? They just pick random the first person they see. Oh God. Oh, no. No! Oh. Jesus Christ, this movie scares me. Gary Oldman scares me. Oh, he's such a good actor. Also, that alcohol was full half an hour ago and now it's half empty. Someone is drinking like crazy. Sir, if you will permit me, I am the National Security Advisor. Yeah, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> he says such a good dying position. It's going to take more time. More time. Oh, what did I say? What did I say? He was in prime dying mode. Ah, finally you found it. I am somebody's son too. I have three small children. Oh my god. That would turn my back on God himself. For Mother Russia. Ooh. You know your father, he has also killed. Yeah, he was a war veteran, right? Because he does it in a tuxedo with a telephone call and I smart. Oh, he's talking about this type of warfare, okay. Oh. Oh. Can you connect me to that number? There's a connect fee of one dollar, sir. Fine. He's like, whatever, I'll take it. Wow, look at all that juice and stuff. Oh, it's stocked up. This is the president. Can you me to the vice president, please? Who did you say is called? Oh my god, hurry up. Look. Anyone there? Ah! Oh! oh my god. Oh my god. Listen to me. You know who I am. <laughs> I'm the president of the United States. Yeah! It'd be funny if you just get shot right now. Go on, Biat! Kick him in the nuts. Believe me, all that had happened is we'd get knocked off our feet. That's all. Shut up! Do it now, do it now. Your commander in chief has issued a direct order. Yes. Do it! <laughs> I like this vice president. She's kind of cool. That was a sick shot. I like that they speak Russian, actually. That's cool, man. Did it work? Did it work? Well, actually, he's still fighting. They can hear the fight, though. They're just hearing these sound effects. <laughs> Poor orange juice on his face. Sounds like really aggressive sex. Do have us in a corner. There is no rescue attempt. I ruled out a mid-air rescue. There's nothing we could- Oh my god, look at this camera work. There's so many really cool tracking shots. It won't end there. And if you die in that plane, does it end there? Catherine, we've got a job to do. He's like, boy, I'm not gonna die on this plane. I'm Harrison Ford. Oh man. So many things have happened in this airplane basement. Ah! Dang it, he's trapped. 
Terry's chocolate orange slices. Milk. Maybe they're all lactose intolerant. He's like, that's right. All Russians are lactose intolerant. <laughs> I thought I'd ask you to come and join us. Oh no. Please. Are they gonna shoot her over the intercom? I bet they like you. You're a nice person. Yes. Okay. I guess so. Oh man. Because I don't want to die. What am I doing at this moment? You're pointing a gun at me. I will count to ten. Oh God. And if you do not surrender. Oh God. This nice woman will die. Gary Oldman, you fiend. <gasps> Seven. Please, I beg you, don't do this. Eight. No. Oh, he let her die. He let her flip and die. I can't believe she died. What? What? I didn't expect that at all. You just made Harrison Ford rage mode time. Next time, I'll choose someone more important. Oh my god. I can't believe she died. I actually thought she wasn't going to die for a second. I was like, yeah, they're not going to do it. They killed her. What are you saying, Major? I'm saying, sir, whoever that is down there. He may be our only hope. Yeah, this guy knows. Pump. There's no switch, Mr. President, so you'll have to cross the wires. Oh, how? Fuel control door. Hang on here. Okay, good thing he brought a knife. He knew about this. Goddamn wires. All right, he's in. All right, we got five. Just start cutting all of them, really. First, cut the green wire. Okay. He's like, uh, I'm colorblind, actually. Oh, you stupid phone. Just make a guess. Come on, you're red, white, and blue. Nice. Nice, President. You know exactly what that, what, what Gary Oldman said there. <laughs> you don't even have to speak Russian to understand what he said. That was almost like a James Bond moment there. Uh, and he does know Russian. That was said at the start of the movie. The member of the senior staff and continue killing one hostage every minute. Every minute. <laughs> he came out guns blazing. I like that they just trapped Harrison Ford in the basement, you know? Like, he just lives there now. Oh wait, never mind. He's not in the basement. <laughs> he left the basement. I forgot about that. Gibbs. No! Don't give Gibbs. Oh, he's the traitor. You give the one traitor the gun? There may be a way to get these people off the plane. How? What do you mean? Why am I whispering? Phone lines are out. No. Voice lines and faxes are on two different systems of encryption. Oh, good for you for knowing this. Whatever happens. I'm kind of scared she's going to die. Nice! Imagine there's like a paper jam. <laughs> if the president is out of contact in a military situation, the secretary of defense is in charge. Why does this matter right now? Come on. <laughs> Guys, look at the stupid fax machine, you stupid idiots. <laughs> Yeah, you think they know that he's on board now? They have like a suspicion, I bet. Oh, the refueling jet. You guys, did you read the stupid fax machine or what? You guys need a drop. Refueling. Go ahead. Drop to 15,000 yes. feet. Oh, thank you so much. You shoot. No, no. Oh, please, sir. I'm not leaving without my family. Yes, sir. You're the best, man. I don't know. Do I trust Gibbs? I don't trust him yet. 
Jump! Go, 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 go! Go, go, come on, come on! Jump! Run, guys! Go, you, come on! Oh, Jerry Goldsmith's score right now is beautiful. Come on, Harrison Ford, stay on the plane! Oh, that guy did not have a shoot. Oh no, oh no. Oh my god, that looks really cool. This movie would look epic today, you know? Like, reamp the visuals. Ooh, it looks sexy. What hostage, the president of the United States of America. Ah, uh, the way he said that, so cold. <laughs> Every time Gary Oldman's on screen, I'm like, whoa. Punch him back. No! You don't understand that. Yeah, you can't kill the president. Go ahead. Which one lives? Oh my god. Tell him to do this. Refuse me. Yes, he's got it. Man will stop the terrorists. Or better yet, the man will stop me. Oh. <laughs> Oh. No. Ha <laughs> ha, he said no. Oh God, oh God. You have the choice. I'll leave her alone, this is between you and me. If you know her, I'll come to fight. He has none. I'll do it. Oh, some emotion on his face now. Dude, two really good performances in this movie. Decision as a president, he's making it as a husband and a father. Maybe you need someone like that. This is the process of being released. I repeat, General Raddick is now being released. Oh uh, yeah. You said you were going to release us. Forgive me, I lied. <laughs> he said that so casually. You know what? They should have lied about releasing. The general as well. They should have just been like, yeah, we released him, but actually not. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Nice, nice. Man's just sacrificed himself. Nice. Nice. See you later. Don't hug. Don't hug. Leave. I love the soundtrack with that Russian song in the background. Oh, don't let him jump. I got a President's like, joke on you, I can fly, I'm a bird. I win! Oh my god, I Oh no, oh, I thought they were gonna fall off together. Shoot his butt. Nice. Oh wow, he's gonna be hanging. Get off my plane. <laughs> the one liner. Oh my god. Neck absolutely broken. Why is that so epic? Okay, let's start flying the plane now, guys. And let's call off the general. Let's bring him back into prison. There's no time for this. There is absolutely no time for kissing right now. Oh, but you still have stupid Gibbs, whatever his name is. Oh, they're so loyal to him. They're just shooting him. They're just executing him. A little unfair. Take him back to jail. Let him live at least. Oh, this is an interesting shot. I'll need a co-pilot. Yes, sir. You, bum, you better not betray him now. There's nothing in this for you anymore. Where's one? Christ, they took off from Maktiabinsk. The base commander there is loyal to Radek. 
Oh, zut. More issues. Or get her off on the pad. Push the button on the yoke by your left thumb. Come on. Well, that answers your question. Never mind. <laughs> US fighters, this is Air Force One. We are under attack. Where the hell are you? They're coming, they're coming. I'm going. Oh. Oh, nice. That was a cool shot. The sail two, they love countermeasures. I'm going in. Oh, what? You're gonna sacrifice yourself? Not worth it. Not worth it. Sluggish. Let me take a look, sir. It looks like there's some bullet holes in your tail there, buddy. With the damage, there's no way they can land. Oh, what? Time to crash, then. Acknowledged. What's happening? What if they transfer planes? Oh. How would you even transfer planes? Do like a, what was it, like a point break situation? A zip line from plane to plane? Air Force One and Liberty 2-4, this is AWACS Blue Star. We had not made our contact. When they use real stuff, it looks really cool. What? Back up. Easy. Air Force. Oh, they're actually doing this. Oh man, you stupid engine one. That's pretty cool. She's okay. That would be so scary. My fear of heights would never. Hang on, hang on. That was a really nice shot though. Oh man, I got chills. Oh, they're really close to the water. Air Force One, you're sinking too fast. We only have time for one more retrieval. Oh no, what? Everyone go at the same time. Please, go! Oh my god. You bum. You know what, at least he made the decision easy for the president. Now only he has to get off. Nice. Nice. Zip line. Just go. 700. They put a lot of faith in these little clips. You deserve this. You deserve what's about to happen. That's pretty sweet. Do you have the president? Uh, well, sort of. <laughs> we got him! <laughs> yes, sir! And that is Air Force One. Now, next up, Air Force Two. <laughs> and that was my reaction to Air Force One, the 1997 action thriller starring Harrison Ford, Gary Oldman, Glenn Close, Wendy Crewson, Lyle Matthews, Lyle Matthews, Les, Les, I think it's Lyle Matthews, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name, and William H. Macy, as well as Xander Berkeley as the Secret Service agent who betrays everyone, who, I don't know, I don't know, I didn't really like that twist that much, I don't know, I just felt like they didn't do anything with him besides just having him be the shock twist for the characters at the end and then to kill William H. Macy so Harrison Ford doesn't have to make the choice at the end. Besides that though, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was so much fun. I thought the pacing was so fast. I thought the close quarter combat and stuff was done really, really well. The camera work was really intriguing. It was very entertaining. The score was swooping. It was grand. It was epic. It was patriotic. I felt like an American watching this <laughs> movie. You know what I mean? As a Canadian, I was like, no, you know what? I'm American now. I'm American as of watching this movie. It was, it was so much good. It was so much good. It was so much fun. And the movie was, <laughs> if you want a bad grammar, so much good. Also, I thought Harrison Ford and Gary Oldman especially were amazing in this movie. Gary Oldman was definitely the standout, though every time he was on screen, it was just crazy. He was so scary and the way he delivered his dialogue was super well done. I, I can't speak on his Russian. I can't speak on how well he did that language as I don't speak Russian and I don't really have any friends that speak Russian. But as an actor, as a performer, for me, he was 
really, really good in this movie. I think the downside of this movie is one, the Xander Berkeley like twist that he's like the bad guy, you know, and from the start, you know, he's a bad guy, but the characters don't until the very end of the movie. I just don't think he worked well in that. And I don't think the movie worked him well into the script. It's like almost like they forgot about him a little bit. And then at the end of the movie, they're like, oh, why don't we just have him kill William H. Macy? And then, you know, then Harrison Ford doesn't have to decide who jumps off the plane. And then also the effects. Some of the effects were good. I will say that some of the effects were good and there were some shots of real planes flying in the sky. It was all really good. But a lot of the effects were very dated, which I found very surprising for a movie that I would assume had a pretty big budget made in 1997. So a while ago, but not like a long time ago, but a while ago. And it just kind of surprised me that some of the effects just seemed very dated, like the plane crash while it was very cool. It was definitely a little bit sketchy and stuff like that. And then when people were flying, like parachuting out of the plane, that looked a little bit weird as well. And so I honestly think this movie, if, if I don't know how many people like this movie, I don't know if this is a very popular movie or not. I watched this movie because I wanted to watch this movie. I, yeah, I don't know how popular or how much people hold this movie in regards to just awesomeness and nostalgia and stuff like that but if there is enough people wanting it i would love to see like a reamp digital like effects version of this movie where you keep everything the same it's almost like star trek the original series if you've been watching that on my channel everyone's been saying that yeah the one the show that i'm watching the effects have been updated from the 60s effects so that they looked better at the time even though they definitely look dated now because they were made in what like 2008 or something computers so come and effects age fast but i think it would be fun to have modern day effects applied to this movie because i think it would make it so much more engaging and i think it would feel very real as well because if they used models in this movie that would be one thing but they don't they use a lot of visual like computer effects which date a lot faster than models and because they used digital computer effects i feel safe in saying it'd be cool if they could reamp those computer effects to modern day styles okay let's talk about the reviews of this movie then we'll go into the score of the film and then some of the camera work which i found really interesting and then we'll finish off with the acting Okay, so 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb and 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. So I'm kind of I'm kind of a little bit sad actually that people only gave it a 6.5 out of 10. I enjoyed it way more than a 6.5 out of 10. I think critics are on the right track with a 78% here. I'd probably give it between a 75 and an 80 somewhere around there. So I don't know. I I, I feel like 6.5 is a very average score for a movie. It's not a bad score by any means, but it's just like a a good score it's not great it's not amazing it's just good and i thought this movie was great so i'm a little disappointed by the audience score maybe people have issues like fair issues with it and uh, maybe you can you can write in the comments and i'll read them and there'll probably be, be fair issues here that i don't think this is a perfect movie by any means but i thought it was just a lot of fun i was entertained the entire time i was sucked into the movie the entire time harrison ford was really fun during this movie and i really liked the confined spaces of air force one which we were in most of the time and so, yeah, I just think that maybe people are being too harsh on this movie, but maybe there are good points to not liking this movie or not thinking that this movie is great at the same time. So I would love to hear your opinions on this film. The score for this movie was amazing. Jerry Goldsmith is a fantastic composer. He's definitely one of my favorite composers. He makes so many scores. And something that I noticed in this score before I get into like the actual score, I guess, is that there were two notes in this score that sounded like the Rudy soundtrack and Jerry Goldsmith if you've seen Rudy created the soundtrack for Rudy so I thought it was interesting maybe it was a little callback or something or I think Rudy might have actually come out after Air Force One I'm not really sure when Rudy came out but it sounded like Rudy and or maybe Rudy sounded like this movie but it was interesting because the notes because the Rudy soundtrack goes do 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 yeah you know the Rudy soundtrack it's it's pretty famous and then in this movie the first two notes of the Rudy soundtrack do do is in the this song like is in the main theme for this movie it's like do 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 it's like that but it's like the same octave well not the octaves i don't even know i don't even know the term for it but it's the same 
tone, the same same tone of sound, pitch of sound, whatever you want to call it, for those first two notes. And it just reminded me of Rudy. And I thought the Rudy song was just going to start playing randomly. And I was like, I don't know. It, <laughs> it was kind of fun. I, I kind of liked that. It was either a callback or the Rudy soundtrack. Maybe Jerry Goldsmith heard those two notes. It was like, let's turn those two notes into the beginning of another song. So I don't know, kind of interesting little connection there between the, the same composer for two different movies with very similar sounding notes for some of the songs. But overall, Jerry Goldsmith's score was incredible. It was sweeping, it was orchestral, it was epic, but it was also very patriarchal with these very long kind of lingering notes as everything as all these instruments were playing you'd get like these brass instruments that would just kind of play you these notes that sounded like you were standing next to the American flag with your heart on the chest I've never done that before personally but you know it sounded like that's what would happen like if if I pictured the American flag it's the kind of the song that played in this movie is like playing in my head you know like that type of music and so it sounded so epic at the same time I love the inclusion of the Russian I don't know if it was like the Russian national anthem or if it was just like a Russian song in general I'm assuming it was the Russian national anthem though or maybe like the Soviet Union national anthem I don't know if those are different but I love the inclusion of that song sung by the prisoners as that general is leaving the prison over top like overlapping the actual score of the movie and you got this mix of like this American patriotic epic soundtrack and then this more sinister like Russian soundtrack playing at the same time while these two forces are fighting each other on the plane it was a really cool mix and it was it was just really fun to listen to and I thought Jerry Goldsmith's score overall was fantastic the camera work in this movie as well was really really good some really creative shots some good reveals a lot of cool tracking shots the use of Air Force One I thought was done really well because it is a very confined space and it it is hard to film in a confined space. If done right, it is just super engaging. It is really cool. That makes the space feel so much bigger than it actually is. If done wrong, the set can be boring very, very quickly. And because we're on a plane, we don't have that much set to deal with. We had the basement, we had the upper level, and we had the middle level with all the seats and where the hostages are. And that's about it. Obviously, we went to different locations to look at different people. We went to the US, we went to Russia, we went to the prison, but most of the movie takes place on the plane. And so you need to make this plane feel way more interesting than it actually is. And I thought the camera work was done really well to really engage you in the set. There were a lot of tracking shots where Harrison Ford would just be walking around the plane and the camera would be following him from behind and you wouldn't really know what's behind every corner and he would be checking. It was very suspenseful or there were just shots of him. It would just move in and out of him and around a box and then close up on him and then around another box and then close up and then around a wall and then close up. You know, like it, the camera was just moving. You really got a sense of the space and because of this really cool movement, it keeps you really engaged on what Harrison Ford is doing as well as the set and it never felt boring and I think that's the biggest props to a movie that takes place in mostly one location is that the location never felt boring it was always really well handled I really like the stairs the stair sequence like not not the sequence I guess but the stair set piece where it's like the upper level and then there's the stairs and then the basement right underneath like that one area of the plane was definitely the most used like it was in the movie quite a bit so many things happened there from the escape to Harrison Ford being stuck in the basement and the guards standing there and stuff like that to people falling down the stairs so many moments of this movie happened in that one singular location but it must have been filmed from every angle every which way it was very creatively done I never got bored of looking at those stairs because so many cool things happened at those stairs and yeah like this is why I'm saying like the location just never felt boring there are also some really nice nice reveals Harrison Ford being revealed on the plane which took me way too long to realize he was on the plane but he's in shadow and then he turns around and the light like cascades over his face that was a really cool moment another moment is just when Harrison Ford is like he went into those bathrooms and he closed all the doors and then the two guards came and you think there was only one at first and he's in the distance and he's walking up the aisle and then all of a sudden another one appears at the front like the forefront of the frame just out of nowhere it's just a really interesting reveal it just keeps the audience on their toes never really knowing what to expect and that's something you need in a very close quarter thing you need that suspense you need that tension to keep the movie going and I thought that this movie did it really well okay let's talk about Gary Oldman and Harrison Ford out everyone else in this movie was really really good but Harrison Ford and Gary Oldman were definitely the standouts of this movie and I kind of have them on another pedestal compared to everyone 
else. I didn't really care about Xander Berkeley's character. It just kind of felt like he was there and he always was like going to do something bad or the movie was like leaning into him being bad. He'd always have like glances and taking guns and stuff like that, but he didn't really do anything. You know, he never helped the bad guys in any way. He helped the hostages escape. It just kind of felt like he was towing the line, like he was unsure about which one to fall to and it just kind of made him feel very bland in the movie overall and then his final twist at the end didn't really feel earned because he didn't really do anything bad besides at the very start of the movie and I kind of forgot about it by that point so it's just kind of like he needed to do more bad things either secretly or just in in general not secretly for the for the moment at the end to hit a lot harder for me at least but Gary Oldman as you Ivan even I I, I didn't even know he had a name in this movie, I'll be honest. I just saw him as Gary Oldman. He was amazing in this movie. He was so intense. He just like his acting is so powerful. Every movie he's in, Gary Oldman is so good. Whenever I see Gary Oldman's name in the credits, I know we're going to have a good movie at least because Gary Oldman is in it. Like if the whole movie is bad, Gary Oldman will at least bring it up to a good movie. You know what I mean? Because he's just a such a good actor. And in this movie, it was the same. When he was killing people, it was crazy. It was so intense. When he was counting down, he shot that woman, that like secretary lady or the lady who flies on Air Force One. I didn't think she was going to get shot. And then he just shoots her. And I liked that the film didn't show her getting shot. You just hear it. And then like a minute later or something, you see them carrying out her body. I really like that because it's a lot scarier to just ply what he did than actually show what he did. Just his dialogue, the way like he sounds so passionate, it sounded like he believed in the cause. The, the dialogue he had between him and Harrison Ford when they're in the top level and he's like, you have to choose between your, your wife and your daughter and stuff like that. Oh, like all of his stuff was so cool. Whenever he was on screen, I think that's when the movie was the best. When he was on screen or when he was talking to Harrison Ford, I think he elevated the movie so much because of his performance and I thought his character as well was really interesting and really cool. So Gary Oldman did a really good job. And last but not least, Harrison Ford as the president. I really liked Harrison Ford in this movie. I haven't seen a Harrison Ford movie in a while. Of course, I've seen Indiana Jones and Star Wars. I've seen all of his big roles and stuff like that. But this one I thought was really good as well. You know, he was a little bit more serious in this movie, a little bit more subtle in this movie. He was really good at the fights. I thought he really pulled off like the fight choreography and stuff like that. I really bought that he was the president. And then also, he had a lot of emotion in this movie as well. The moment where he was like crying, he's like, no, I'll do it and stuff. And there's tears running down his eyes. I've never really seen Harrison Ford act with a lot of emotion before. Usually he's a pretty stoic, like hero, kind of snarky character, if you know what I mean. Like the Han Solo, Indiana Jones type character. And I've never, I never really see him with too much expression or emotion on his face. But in this, he really sold it for me. I really enjoyed it. I, he was sold him as a president. I sold he sold me as a father, as as a, as a husband, and overall I just thought he was a really good choice to play the president and I thought he did a really good job. And yeah, that is my reaction to Air Force One, the 1997 action thriller. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. I know also I was wrong that this is not a Tom Clancy one. I thought he was going to be Jack Ryan, but he was not Jack Ryan in this. He was the president. But if The Fugitive is part of that like Tom Clancy see Jack Ryan then let me know if I should watch it because I enjoyed Harrison Ford in this so I would probably enjoy Harrison Ford in the other one thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction